They're gonna kill the love of my life. Casey! If I don't go back to what I was doing. Our line of work is quite brutal and quite ruthless. How far would you go for love? You steal truck, bring it to me. Then you make your money. Is it dangerous? Of course it's dangerous! Nicholas Holt, Felicity Jones, with Ben Kingsley and Anthony Hopkins. All this trouble, all this pain for love. Collide. Now playing. Rated PG-13. Maybe inappropriate for children under 13. Lock Good morning. Radio. Good morning. You have reached Venus Unplugged, and this is your host, Lorraine Nightheart. This is a virtual heartbreak hotel. So all things Venusian, all things of the heart. If our heart's been broken, we're going to keep it open because we need more room to love and mirror love. The, uh, the divine matrix is like a mirror, and uh, it's a bridge between the worlds, our inner and our outer world. And it can only give us what we give it to work with. So that's important to remember. And that's what we're working towards. So I'm completing um, the, the, the uh, four elemental females, the eternal woman. And uh, there are a few things I want to work with today. And that will be the best that we were working with was the uh, Vidaya or medial woman, and I have some marvelous quotes that I want to share with you. But uh, first and foremost, I want to talk about Toni Wolf, whose work this is about. Now, she maintains that the psyche of a woman contains four major archetypes, the mother, the Amazon, the Hatara, and the medial or medial woman. By the time a woman reaches maturity, each of these types has been set, consciously or unconsciously. It's our own particular ego orientation that has established its primary objectives. Two of the types, the mother and her Tara, which we spoke about previously. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be leaving those up for about, you know, five weeks. So uh, download them or go on my, they'll be moving to my website, LorraineNightheart.com. I'll be keeping up about six weeks of episodes so everybody can... Uh, Listen to those and download. And then if you can't find them, that's where they are. In my house, in, in the Heartbreak Hotel house, there they go. Okay. So the two types, the mother and the Hatara, have a primary personal orientation, while the Amazon and the medial woman are orientated primarily to impersonal and collective life. Once a woman figures out which of these two, two types is closest to, to how she uh, manages her world, she realizes that there are two adjunct secondary types, uh, which she may also have some familiar. So we, we go through these different types. We have experiences. But if we get out of balance, so the fourth and opposite one, uh, which she is less familiar with and somewhat uncomfortable each type has its distinctive familiar characteristics, its less familiar shadow side, its career possibilities, its particular manner of relating to men and children, and its particular relationship to others. So, for example, I am by nature predominantly the Medial. Um, which I can't even I can't even decide how I want to name this. Is it medial or medial? I'm going to work on this. So my shadow aspect would be the Amazon, you know, kind of going in the world and bringing, bringing the, the culture forward in that way. I, I need to bring it towards the edge. I need to um, see those, those things that are not formulated yet and, uh, and hand them to the Amazon. Although, you know, now that I'm saying this somewhere, life is going to push me into a position where I have to build something. But such is life. A woman's self-nurture, how do, you, how do we take care of ourselves, includes the invitation for her to explore and integrate all of the four types into her awareness and understanding, and one by one, over time. If she remains caught in the primary type, her development and growth will become stifled, her particular shadow side more powerful and destructive, and her world seriously limited. So... Uh, we have to keep that in mind. I was just 
down at, um, in my thousands of books in my library. There's a, a marvelous book uh, for those that are, are uh, definitely uh, the mother, bride, opposite, and the uh, Hattara. It's a delightful book. It's a wise book. Uh, it's a- advice to a young wife from an old mistress. Isn't that perfect? The 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 mother bride and and the the hatara. And this was written years ago. I think I read this like in the eighties. Okay, and it is by who the hell is it by? Who the hell is she? Oh, uh, Michael, which actually it's a female name, Dure. M I C H A E L, capital D R U R Y. Uh, so that's a it's a great read. And it's and it's deep, so that's one thing. Okay, now uh, what are we going to go through here? I want to read you some poetry to give you a sense of the medial woman. Okay, and see, there she's the the aspect of the adult feminine is impersonal in in this type. Okay, as is in the Amazon, but opposite the Amazon, in that the fields she plays in are in the fields of spirit and unconscious ideation. The medial is a channel from the external world to her internal or from the collective unconscious to potential consciousness. She's naturally in tune with her environment and with her intuitive abilities, and she herself and the vibrations that are around her. Her strength is in the ability to trust the internal messages over what is obviously standing in front of her as the two commonly oppose each other in the world of the medial. She has some hecatate or witch-like qualities about her that she knows what she knows. I'm always so surprised to feel good. I'm like a witch. It's like, Really? But that, but they they smell the shadow aspect of of an intuitive or a seer, and uh, that's cool too. It warns you that you know when it's when it's not used properly, it is witch like, okay. Uh, but this knowing does not come to her through reason or exploration. Rather, if she comes near it, it just evades her and demands recognition. When she is surrounded by light, light and creativity and creative energy. All is well with her and those around her. However, when darkness and discord appear on the horizon of the unconscious, she is the first to sense it. If she denies the intuitive invasion, then the dynamics are pushed into her own shadow. Ooh, we don't like that. And she may be forced to act out the discord in physical or psychological illnesses. This is also why you need to protect yourself when you're doing a session. Because you t- you you know you're you're merging, and and you need to release that afterwards. It's also the main reason why I got involved in the Jungian work because I was always so terrified uh, uh, of how awry a reading could go if I don't know my own material. Uh, and that language, of course, and that now serves me, in a, and I serve it in an extraordinary way. However, the structural form of the medial is a truly a vessel, not a receptacle. Therefore, she can avoid this illness, avoid that was this illness, by simply allowing the energy of the intuition to pass through her by announcing it to consciousness, either hers or to whomever it may belong. One of the tricky aspects of being a medial is determining for whom the bell tolls. She can easily cause great discord herself by confusing inner messages from her unconscious with collective material or by assuming that every thought that ripples through her head is a message for someone. That's dangerous. That that that's really scary when people do that. You know, they come out of the crowd and they tell you something. It's like really keep it to yourself. Okay. Just like the Amazon needs to refine her skills, so the medium needs to refine hers. Her unwillingness to apply discipline and wisdom to her gift can be seriously detrimental to both herself and those close to her. So, ladies and gentlemen, and I've met men who have this gift too, and it it applies for them. I would just see that as, as their anima. 
figure. They're in a male. And uh, they just do things in a different way. So here we're going to have a message from, um, this comes from uh, the, the book The Mists of Avalon uh, by uh, Marion Zimmer Bradley. And this is uh, a paragraph that was in her book, and I actually had it uh, transcribed and have it posted in front of my face. Okay. If you would have the message of the gods to direct your life, look for that which repeats again and again. For this is the message given by the gods, the comic lesson you must learn for this incarnation. It comes again and again until you have made it part of your soul and your enduring spirit. So you see why we have a series of chronic plunders in our love life? It's just so we can see... This karmic pattern and karma is not punishment. It's a refinement. It is cause and effect, but it helps us repeat it so we, that we can refine it, that we know it. It's like a great uh, body uh, or, of work or a great poem. We have to read, or a song, or a dance, and we have to read again and again and again, and each time it is rich within our being. We don't get this stuff. Uh, in in one course or one relationship, it's many, and and very often we have uh, with these four types we we act differently in four different kinds of relationships, and sometimes we act all four of them out in one sentence, which is terrifying for most people, but we can do that. So when we begin to get that sense, when we hear something written like that, it moves our heart and our soul, and then the challenges trying to live it see because uh, the spirit of prophecy it's a divine vocation the word prophecy has come to mean foretelling of the future but in ancient days a prophet was a person capable of ecstasy of being filled with spirit the prophet was the seer or as we would say one in whom the deep unconscious has been activated and to whom is given the choice between meeting and relating to the powers thus released or succumbing to possession by them. In the former case, a true prophet or seer is born, a person burning with the strength and beauty of an inner vision, a channel for the wisdom of God, but one who nevertheless remains human related to this gift of spirit and never identified with it. But one who allows ecstasy to remain on the emotional level, who loses his or her ordinary humanity or is incapable of this kind of obedience that the inner voice demands, will be split and destroyed by this gift of spirit and will end up in the clutches on the demonic side. And this, I know, is true. I've always had a healthy terror of the gift. And was personally, it was my gift. Uh, it's not really mine. I, it's something that was given. It could be taken away at any minute. And uh, I'm acutely aware of that. And I'm glad that I'm terrified. Because if you identify, it's a slippery slope. And you won't even see your demise coming. So for those who, uh, and as I said, this, this uh, medial type, uh, you know, more and more people are opening up to this. They're realizing what it is. They're not crazy, which I always find so interesting. People go, well, that person's crazy. It's like, but it's still true. They're still telling the truth. Just because the person's crazy, that doesn't mean that they don't know the truth. They're just kind of giving it in a way that, you know, maybe you've got to read it a little differently. So these assumptions, and when, when we're pulled by, or something will just come out of us, um, what some people will call a Freudian slip, I call it a Jungian truth. The shadow spoke. And when the shadow speaks, that's not what the ego wanted to say, but it's what the shat, and we have to stand by it. Usually it's hilarious, uh, you know, after you, you know, after you look at it and go like, oh, my God, I really said that, that, but that was my deep truth. And there it was, right in my face. Now, there is another, there's a fantastic 
This is probably one of the richest poems ever. It is The Thunder, The Perfect Mind. It's a translation by George W. McRae. And this is an excerpt from it, of The Thunder, The Perfect Mind. And this is about, this is the goddess when she speaks in her wholeness and her paradox. So anyone who wants to work on, just on a feeling level of what paradox is, uh, read this poem. Uh, I think it's Gnostic.org, okay? And just work with it and let that move through you because it is all this paradox of the great divine feminine. So, uh, this is the poem, an excerpt from it. The Thunder, the Perfect Mind. I was sent forth from the power, and I have come to those who reflect upon me. And I have been found among those who seek after me. Look upon me, those who reflect upon me, and you hearers hear me, you, you who are waiting for me, take me to yourselves. Oh, isn't that divine? You, you, you who are waiting for me, take me to yourselves, and do not banish me from your sight. Do not be ignorant of me anywhere, for I am the first and the last I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. Oh, doesn't that just rock your world? Wouldn't you feel fabulous if you could just stand there and say, I am the whore and the holy one? Now, that's consciousness. I am the wife and the virgin. See, we have all these, the four types there. I am the mother and the daughter. Now, right there in those four lines, is uh, so much of what Tony Wolf was talking about and uh, wrote about, and uh, and whose time has come. It, it's time for us to start recognizing, you know, all these this complexity. We we so often we're not who we think we are, and we're certainly not who other people think we are. And when we realize these refinements, these poetics of the soul, these images, because psyche only works in images. She doesn't speak English, you know, or. Japanese or any of those, and and unfortunately, in the English language, um, we, we we are deficient because we only have one word for love, one four-letter word for love. Sanskrit, I think, there's eighty-seven or ninety-seven words to describe love. So we have to start creating uh, a deeper and richer uh, vocabulary and and feelings. Remember, feelings are what we value. Feelings are our emotions. They're what we value. So if we just, just this here, for I am the first, feel that for yourself. That part of you that is this. That part of you that is in her and she is in you. She is the Isis. She is Venus. And she is the crucified Venus. I'll get into that in a couple of months. Just want to make sure you feel safe with this stuff that I have to say, and then we're going to talk about the crucified Venus, which has been a body of my my work, uh, because uh, we have crucified this exquisite being and terrifying being, and we've turned her into ping pong. But don't get me started. Today's not the day. Okay, so once again, for I am the first and the last. I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. I am the mother and the daughter. That's what integration looks like. All of these things are in opposition, but not fighting if we let them exist. If we're just trying to be one and not the other, we're boring, for starters, and doomed because we're so much richer. And there's enough consciousness in the world now that we can start living this, or at least attempting to. But it has to be lived from within, not necessarily talked about, because these things are sacred. And there's another exquisite quote, one of my favorites from Esther Harding and her book, Woman's Mysteries, and she wrote this like in 1927 or something. Um, it's a fantastic book. It's not an easy book to read, uh, but for those who feel like uh, not having an easy summer, I'd buy it and listen to it. 
and read it, okay? So the quote from her where she gives a definition of the virgin, okay? The woman who is virgin, one in herself, does what she does, not because of any desire to please, not to be liked or to be approved, even by herself, not because of any desire to gain power over another, but because what she does is true. Now, this takes a lifetime to live up to. And, and the, the word virgin is not, is not a sexual position. The virgin is whole within herself. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It's a state of consciousness. So again, for those who want to take an oath to themselves um, of what this would feel like to be integrated, because that's what we want to move towards. Integration means wholeness. And wholeness always has to do with the number four the square, the four, the cross. Um, and that's why I want to work with the four feminines. And this also goes for men, too, because their anima, their feminine, is, um, is very active and is aware of all this. And the more we become aware of in, internal worlds and how one another operates, it's much easier. Or, or I, We're not even into easier. I don't care about easier, actually. I care about meaningful. That's what I care about. If it has meaning and has depth, once you understand this, once you work with it within yourself, and, and I'm just one of millions of people that are suggesting things. So, uh, you know, if how I say it resonates, rock on, sister and brother, okay? Or somebody else, that's what you do, because this is what life is about. We are in the Aquarian age. We can manifest the divine matrix. It's a local call. It's not long distance. We don't have to climb mountains. Or if you like climbing mountains, because you're probably in Amazon, you'll do that. You see, I don't have images like that. One of my dearest friends, she's in Amazon. We drive by a mountain. She wants to climb it. I want to go to the spot at the base of it. We love one another. We go our separate ways. We meet for dinner. That's the way that one goes, okay? So once again, this exquisite, I mean, this is a huge contemplation. The woman who is virginal. One in herself does what she does, not because of any desire to please, not to be liked, or to be approved, even by herself. Not because of any desire to gain power over another, but because what she does is true. That's awesome. May your days be filled with your truth. And that everything you do is what is true for your being, your inner being. So that's what's going on. Now what is going to be happening, because I get nervous because I know uh, the, uh, the English lady is going to tell me to get off the, the phone. And I don't want to. So we went over those four types. As I said, download... Um, I think I've got 15 sessions up there, 15, and download them because eventually I'm only going to be having like six or seven sessions at a time. And then people will go like, oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll download it, and, and they don't get to it. And then it's not going to be there, but it's going to be at LorraineNightheart.com. And I'm also going to be doing uh, some visuals and writing a, a blog so that we can keep on being reminded of uh, these things that I want to share and how life can be and how love can be. And also, if you haven't uh, looked at uh, Ann Ortley's uh, articles, this, this her, her blog, I mean, it's really pretty amazing what's happening, that we're all being facing seven fated choices. Now that rocks my world. I have been really thinking about that because fate is the DNA, okay? Destiny is the choice, if we're going to just paraphrase things. So this week in particular, I've been working on this, and the way I look at it, I go for the thing that I fear the most first or the hardest thing. You know, I've always done that. You know, let me do the hardest thing first, and then just in case I don't get to the other things, those are the easier things, and I probably can can get to them much quicker. I don't take the, the other way around. So with the hardest things, 
So that's what I did this week, and what I'm continuing to do is I'm looking at the thing. Oh, my God, I'm really terrified of that, you know. Oh, please let anything happen, just not that. Then, bingo, that's the discipline. That's the place where we need to look and say, why do I have, you know, not even why do I have to feel it. Let me see what that is about, because that can be, you know, saving the best for last. That can be a place in your being that uh, you've had to spend your whole life getting ready to dance with that. And very often that is love and intimacy, the real kind, the real deal, the one where nobody's riding over anybody else, the naked truth, the divine so I'm looking at, you know, at these things and I'm saying, okay, what have I avoided? What have I looked at? What, you know, not what I've done. Um, I'm happy and with, with what I've done. And, and so much of life is so exquisite. But the real story and the real growth is the thing that we fear. And the heavens are helping us open to that. So if your fear is love and intimacy, take a chance. First of all, with yourself. Because you're never going to be able to love anybody greater than you love yourself. And if they love you greater than you love yourself, you are going to torture the shit out of them. And I see that happen with a lot of people that love somebody so truly and so deeply, but the person doesn't love themselves. And so the beloved gets tortured and they can't understand why does he say that why doesn't he love me or why can't she marry me or all that it's because you're seeing the future you're seeing the 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 soul of the person you're 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 giving that pure part and if they cannot recognize that or are not working towards that it doesn't end well very often it doesn't even begin let alone end so you're not being rejected. They can't. You you would be asking them to contain something that would be torture for them. Because I've been at this work thirty years. Yeah, it's got to be twenty nine, thirty years now. And one of the one you get the greatest resistance when you try to give people their gold too quickly. Because that's what we have to go, or that's another thing that this week is go through where you've left your gold. You know, you love that person more than you love yourself. Well, go get that gold back. You need it for now. This is a faded uh, week. We're going to be rocking. This is serious, big, serious, uh, deep, profound. So if you have, uh, you know, you're suffering from an unrequited love, Drop it. Go get the gold back. Stop giving it to the unrequited love. You know, they'll be there. They're not going any place. You know, we're all interconnected. We're going to run into one another sometime between it here and eternity. So this is way too important uh, this time in your life and in your evolution. You know, and if enough of us really do this work towards our wholeness, Uh, The world shifts. It's the greatest contribution we can make is our own consciousness. And so seven choices. So make them. Don't don't have them be made for you. Because uh, when they're made for us, by the time we figure out what's really going on, you know, it's 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 screwed up half of our lives. So those seven choices or potentials or what they may be of how the dream. Be, she's here. I gotta bounce. The lady told me. So next week we're gonna start with a little introduction to dreams, kind of like a dream etiquette. How do we how do we enter the dream world? So have a fantastic uh, week. Don't forget your seven choices and uh, rock on. Bye. They're gonna kill the love of my life. Yeah. If I don't go back to what I was doing. Our line of work is quite brutal and quite ruthless. How far would you go for love? You steal truck, bring it to me. Then you make your money. Is it dangerous? 
Of course it's dangerous. Nicholas Holt, Felicity Jones, with Ben Kingsley and Anthony Hopkins. All this trouble, all this pain, for love. Collide, now playing. Rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Collide, now playing. Rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Collide, now playing.